Wrestling Show, NorthJerseySports.com's original multimedia series talking all things wrestling, public and non-public across North Jersey. Believe it or not, this is season six, episode one. We have been at this a long time and excited to get going again with the brand new season. I am Corey Doviak, being joined by my well-known cast of characters here as we have been together for quite a while now. Welcoming in first, my co-host, Kenny Sarajan. And Kenny, I just got to ask you, how you feeling, pal? I'm feeling fine. We're recuperating and hope to be able to be at the uh, at least the finals of the uh, BCCA holiday tournament. So that's what we're shooting for. All right, which leads us to our next co-host. He is the head coach of the Pascac Valley Fighting Indians, a guy who is going to make sure Kenny Sarajan is in attendance at the George Jockish Holiday Festival. Tommy Galeone, we can get somebody to wheel Kenny in there, right? Yeah, I guess. I, for all he's done for me, I guess that's the least I can do for him. Yeah, a little, little fireman carry. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know about that. <laughs> 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 My back will be hurt me then. <laughs> <laughs> the other member of the crew tonight, uh, he's got a lot of titles, but the one we'll go with here is the assistant coach over at Westwood, but a man who is uh, very well-versed on all things Bergen County Wrestling, Mike Atanasio. What's going on, At? Hey, everything's good. Ready to go. Pumped for the season. Yeah, I think that's the general feeling around here, at least judging by what's been going on behind the scenes with the text messaging here uh, on the Wrestling Show crew. Kenny uh, chiming in there with a beep. Good to hear from you, Kenny, as always, and I'm sure that will be a recurring theme this year. You know, it's been crazy. Let me just set up the show tonight. We're going to talk a little bit of the non-public versus public split that went on uh, with the vote by the NJSIA membership. That's been a hot topic. Uh, certainly in all other sports, it, it has come home to roost in wrestling as it has in every other sport. I mean, it's really in the off season between uh, seasons between sports, it's really all that anybody's been talking about, especially those on the wrestling scene. We will try to make some sense of it. We will weigh in with our uh, ideas. We'll try to handle it in a professional manner. We're going to have James Santana. He is the uh, principal at Northern Valley Demarest High School and another guy with a deep and storied wrestling history in Bergen County. So he's going to help us shed some light on that. We'll do it. And then we're going to move on to talk about the George Jackish Holiday Festival, the co-director of that tournament, Jack McCarty, is going to join us and talk about some of the changes. The tournament is back in Bergen County, going to be held at Hackensack High School this year, so uh, back on home soil, and there are some other changes in store, too. We will talk to Jack about that. But, Kenny, we are one man short tonight. How do we handle the explanation? Well, he, he's tied up right now, and uh, but he, he is paying attention, and hopefully uh, – one of our favorites and one of our key people, Don Spataro, will be back with us soon. Donnie, I love you, pal. Let's, let's just get that on the uh, on the agenda, and we'll and we'll uh, certainly ha- look forward to having Donnie back here. And it, and it, again, it, the non-public versus the public split has caused a lot of fissures in high school athletics in New Jersey, really across the country, and it's hitting us here too on the wrestling show. And it's not acrimonious between any of us. It's just, you know, everybody's got their own point of view. A lot of people are intractable in their points of view, and they all have merit. So we're not here to say one's one's right and one's wrong. But, uh, Kenny, help me out here. Where are we going? Okay. How are we going to handle it? And uh, how should we start the conversation? Well, let's let's start it this way. One of the, one of the things I think we want to do tonight and for the, the, the many people who listen to us is take this discussion out of – the, the forums where people just put up wherever they want. And, and as I said to you guys, you know, when we talk about reform or we talk about change, there's got to be a reason for it. And so what we want to do is get the facts out right. That's why we're bringing James, who was one of the guys who wrote the proposals. We've got Mike, Tommy, and myself who've been involved in this for uh, collectively over, uh, you know, probably close to a hundred years of wrestling. <laughs> and, and, Look at what was the problem, why the change, the impact of football on this, because I think Tommy and I, and I don't know about at, we all agree that part of this change is part of the football mindset. And then does the solution that has been voted on a week ago today, does that solve the, what the perceived, and I don't want to say problem, 
the need for change. Does that solve the need for change? So let's start by saying, and I'll go to Mike. Mike, you want to define for us, before we get James on, what was the proposal that was passed by the members of the NJSIAA uh, last uh, Monday? And if you could define it and Tommy can jump in so that everybody is on the same page to start with. Okay, I think the only, the only way to do it is to talk a little bit of history because uh, there was a very similar proposal, we called it the Region 9 proposal, that was voted through the Executive Committee and the Athletic Directors and everybody at the NJSIA, I think it was about eight years ago, and it did a similar thing to what the proposal is going to do now. Uh, it divided regions between public and non-public, the difference is that plan had eight regions of public schools and one region of non-publics. Um, this plan differs slightly. Uh, one of the big differences is it's going to be eight total regions, including the one non-public and seven public regions. And it's going to increase the amount of participation in state tournaments. Now, one of the big differences in the plan, because of course when when people ask questions about the plan at the state level, one of the things that comes up is, well, what's different about this? And the biggest difference is the emergence of the transient wrestler. Um, since that proposal has taken place, there are a number of wrestlers that have been competing for teams that are non-public that don't live in the area that they're competing. So in other words, at the district level, you have people, a district is supposed to be your local teams and your local, the people that live in that area, and of course your region is a larger group of people in the same geographic area, but we have many, you know, many athletes that are competing for teams that don't live anywhere near that area. And uh, I think that's one of the biggest differences that, you know, the commissioner has to decide, is this difference enough to change our mind? Because last time it was vetoed. And I think that when the commissioner has to decide on whether or not to uphold the decision by the state or not, the, trans, the emergence of the transient wrestler, to me, is extremely important to consider. Okay, um, let's, let's make one thing clear, Mike. The plan mm -hmm. eight years ago was approved by the membership, and then based on an appeal to the commissioner uh, at the time, it, the commissioner wouldn't sign off on it, and, it, and that's, that's where right. it died. Interestingly enough, a little trivia for you trivia fans, the current commissioner of education is a guy named David Hespy who will be ruling on this. He's a Park Ridge guy, and actually his nephew, Tyler, has to be wrestled for Donnie over at Emerson Park Ridge. So that's just, just one thing to throw in there. Uh, and you know what? One other, yeah, one other thing that's interesting, too, is that the last commissioner um, basically vetoed it without discussing it with anyone. Just Correct. It was presented to him by someone and vetoed it without discussion. Um, one of the things that we know is going to be different is that he will be hearing from both sides. He'll be meeting with the state lawyer. He'll be meeting with Stephen Timko, who's the head of the State Department. And he will be, you know, weighing in on this, on this as far as what he thinks his membership wants and what he thinks is right. And it will be a little bit different. I don't know if the result will be different. The truth is we really have no idea. Um, it could be the exact same result. And if it is, it is. But we know that at least this time there will be, there'll be more dialogue. There will be more conversation than it was last time. I, uh, all right, you made one point that leads a question th that I got to ask you. You talked about the transient wrestler, okay? And one of the things, you know, what different from 15 years ago when when there were, you know, we had the wrestlers from different area towns wrestling for a parochial school? Why is it so much a bigger issue now? Well, I think there's a fairness and equity issue because people that are really affected by the transient wrestler, uh, people feel like the programs are suffering. They don't have the same opportunities when you bring elite wrestlers from other areas. And it has a, it has a big domino effect because it affects the wrestlers that are not able, that are displaced by people that don't live in their region. I mean, let's face it, regions were first formed to you know, separate the state into different groups based on, on where people live. And when you have, like, for example, Region 2 last year had 14 wrestlers that did not live in the Region 2 area that took medals. Okay, so, um, so this is what I'm asking you. And, and, because you, you can't 
argue this one based on competition. What you're saying is, I mean, 15 years ago, there were kids who didn't live in our region that, that won region titles. What right. you're saying is it's the increased number of that happening that has brought this, in your mind, to the forefront. Am I, am I interpreting you correctly? Look, I think it's definitely that that is a focus of the plan, but I also have to think that, you know, let's be honest, this is what the whole state is talking about, public and non-public. I mean, I feel like it's one of those things where we, many people feel that wrestling needs to catch up with other sports. Most other sports have separation. We're not saying that we want to separate from the publics and non-publics at the highest level. The state tournament will be relatively unchanged. The only thing that will be different is there'll be more people going, more people qualifying. The road they're taking is going to be different. But, mm -hmm. you know, look, one, one thing that keeps going through my mind is years ago, only the top wrestler in each region went. And there was a time when only four guys went because we only had four regions. And people thought, you know, oh, now there's going to be eight regions. It's going to be too easy. It's going to be diluted. Then it was the finalists get to go. Oh, no, it's going to get diluted. It's going to ruin the tournament. Then at some point we got smart and said, you know, there's a lot of really good third placers. They should go too. And guess what? We've had a few guys that were third placers that were state champions. So, again, people were worried, oh, the tournament's going to be ruined. It's going to be diluted. But it turns out it wasn't. It made it pretty exciting because third place guys at the region level won a state title. All we're going to do is give more kids the opportunity. It's a great opportunity to go to the states. Um, it's something that most people will always say they're proud of. They're, you know, and you never know. Maybe one of these guys who wasn't going to go the old way is going to go, and maybe they place in the state. This is about, let's face it, it's about education. We're giving kids a great opportunity. No one is being eliminated. It's more inclusive than it used to be before, not more restrictive. So in no way, shape, or form, in my mind, does this – Take away from our state tournament. Well, well, and 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 just and we'll get. I, it's almost time, I think, for us to get James on. But uh, and I want to hear from Tommy first. But in, in one sense, if I was a parochial, if I was a pro parochial person, I would say, well, under this plan, we are limited in terms of the number of you, you're giving us a defined number, which in one sense is a positive because now I know I'm guaranteed these spots. But in another sense, I'm not able to expand upon that number, which in some years I might have been able to. So we've got to get both sides of that thing. Uh, Tommy, you got anything you want to pop in now, or should we go to James? No, I mean, I just, just kind of re reiterate what Mike said. I think he made a great point with no right now, these people I talk to don't want to change um, the tournament in Atlantic City. Mike just said getting to Atlantic City, the path down there, you know, is going gonna, is gonna to change. Like, you know, Mike, I did think gave a great history lesson People complain when they went to eight, you know, regions and this, that, the other thing. And look, it all worked out, right? And I think as long as we keep the basis of Atlantic City the same, which I think everyone agrees on, we have one true state champion. I think it's, um, you know, I, I think it'll be fine. I think once everyone gets over this whole, you know, the initial reaction, and to be honest, we don't even know where this vote is going to go, right? Mm -hmm. Last, you know, <laughs> eight years ago, we were in the same boat. Oh, it's, you know, the ADs, you know. Everyone loved the proposal. Proposal, the commissioner shot it down. We have no clue what the commissioner's thinking right now. So right. everyone's getting, you know, everyone's getting crazy. We could, you know, we could be talking about this for for absolutely no reason. We don't know. <laughs> Good point, Tom. No, I'm serious. You know, everyone's getting <laughs> yeah. all all worked up. But uh, but to what Kenny said, this is a, a people may not want to agree with this, but it's all it's it's all coming in from football. You know, football mm -hmm. is the one that's you know it impacts everything. I've said it all along. It's going to always, you know, this talk has been brought up in baseball too. Um, you know, yep. county tournament baseball, should they split it into two and then play a, a parochial champ versus the public champ? We've They've had that conversation in basketball. Mm -hmm. It's out there. It's just, you know, it's going to constantly come up, um, you know, with some of the issues that, that Mike brought up with the transient guys. So it's never going to go away, personally, yeah. that's my feeling. One, tra the one transient, the transient, Transient being the term, the newly minted term in terms of uh, North Jersey high school athletics, yeah. which, you know, it's a, it's a new definition because, you know, you hear transfer, you hear this, that, the other thing, recruiting. Here's the thing. I think the days of recruiting are over where a non-public school goes out, stands, and I'm speaking from a football standpoint here, where they send three guys out, stand on the sideline and say, hey, you look Wait, good. You think so, that those yeah, I, I think those days are gone. I think that they've built themselves into such powerhouses now that they don't have to do that. They 
I mean, you got between, you know, ESPN, you putting games on between MSG varsity, between, uh, you know, the local, uh, news media. And we know who, of whom I speak, who pay a lot of attention. Yeah, it's inescapable now, the power that these programs have. And they're really the, – the recruiting part of it, the kids are coming by themselves, I think, nowadays. So I'll, I think – I'll add go ahead. two things to that. We, we One, I agree with you, Corey, and everybody talks about the recruiting and transferring, and, and, and we, we start getting crazy about that. And, and I specifically – hope to stay away from that in this discussion because this discussion has a different flavor to it but it is true that you know and and we heard it on our show last year and we can't deny it the the kid grello dave didn't even know the kid was coming to bc the kid was coming to bc for football he told us that on our show right and and when he so it, we've seen it happen. We see it happen in public schools. We see it happen in private schools. We see people trying to buy homes in certain towns to go to a yep. public school. So the, the, while there while there still is recruiting, let me tell you something. Recruiting happens in a lot of places. Yeah, we've seen it. Yeah, it and, does. And, yeah. and the case I'll bring up in one of my tirades against the the NJSIAA is they disqualified North Bergen from a, a football championship because of a, a kid who they accused of recruiting from Paulsboro, was it? And then yeah. providing him with housing. And then the same kid was allowed to compete not only in our Bergen County Chris, uh, holiday tournament, but also in the state tournament. So, yeah. I mean, that's part of the inconsistencies of the, of the NJSIAA. And it's also part of the things that, Let's make sure that before we start pointing fingers at everybody, everybody's clean. And these kids do now come to some of these places and say, I want to come there. Yes. And, and we can't deny it. The one yes, other in some ways, but wait, in some ways, Bergen County High School Athletics, specifically because that's our, you know, that's our, our breadbasket, is a victim of its own success because mm -hmm. it is so well run. Because it is so attractive, because we have great facilities all over the place, that it is attracting kids who don't have those same opportunities in other places. I mean, listen, Bergen County is a great place to play. Tommy, you got a nice uh, little facility up there at Pasag Valley, Pasag Valley. Uh, Pasag Valley, first off. Oh, but uh, uh, no, I, I agree. I think. Uh, I mean, Kenny, you guys all make great points. Part of the problem too is, you no matter what proposal you come up with, no matter what solution you try not everyone's going to be pleased so you got to think about what's in the best interest of of the kids and mike said it before it's education you know you, you're going to sit everybody you know try to come up with a proposal if they tweaked it another way you'd have maybe half the public schools mad at you if you tweak mm -hmm. it this way you got the non-publics mad at you. no matter what you do the biggest thing i think that they you know maybe the njsia has to start doing is kind of changing the way that you know maybe they come up with things and get people sit down, come up with some ideas together, non-publics, publics, some of the coaches, some of the ADs, not everybody involved, but have mm -hmm. them come and try to figure out an idea before proposals are put up there and voted on. But that's for a whole other story. Yeah, yeah that's, you that's know, the whole... NJSA, the way they go about some of these things is just, in well, my mind, well, it, kind of ridiculous. The, the, but... the, law, the law is always uh, far behind yeah, the reality on you the know. ground. You're always trying to play catch-up. And, and this used to be an NNJIL football problem. It has metastasized now to engulf the entire state in every sport. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, right. say, there's one thing I wanted to add. Okay. The one thing that makes wrestling different, and and I'll come back to this after we get James on, yes. is that wrestling is the one sport where how you do one year is impacts your opportunities the next year. Yes. So, so right. the fact that Ramapo won uh, a football championship this year doesn't assist them significantly for next year. Right. But the fact that I placed in a certain region and then go to another region does impact somebody. And, right. and, and Kenny, you know what? It's, a great, it's a great point, and it's going to play out this weekend because this and, weekend and, people travel. I'm sorry, jump on you there for a second, Kenny. People are going to travel all over the state this year for tournaments, right? They use seating criteria. 
the seating criteria is what did you do last year? And if you're in a district and a region that has all these wrestlers that don't even live in your area, you're at a disadvantage already. The next year, you were impacted by it last year because maybe you were displaced. And then you turn around and you look and say, well, you know, that's over. It's not over. Because this you know what? You could be seated in a, in a worse place. Because okay, but now that I've said that, now that I've said that, I'm going to go back to what I emailed you guys about. Make sure the solution addresses the issue. Because in one context, this only addresses it when a parochial oh. does that. We have instances where publics are doing it too, and it's not being addressed. So I got to be fair. Uh, mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. You know, we have, kids, we, we have kids going back and forth, and that's why the, one of the proposals last um, Monday that was the one that was of the five that was voted down was the transfer rule because the ADs finally figured out that you weren't punishing the parochials, you were hurting the publics more by that strict uh, transfer rule. Yep. So, so the, the issue of the transient wrestler – and what the point I, I want to make I love that term. The issue of the transient wrestler is not just a parochial uh, or not a not public issue. It, mm -hmm. it it does involve public schools too. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now let's let's bring before we don't have a guest because he fell asleep waiting for us to call him. All right. <laughs> and also uh because I wa I have some uh, looking at it from a non-public point of view, too, I have some questions that I would like to ask. And now, in an attempt to further the conversation, we're going to go to the source here. The man who wrote the proposal that was voted upon last week by the NJSIAA membership, joining us on the Moe's Southwest Grill Hotline is Northern Valley Regional High School at Demarest Principal, a former wrestling coach at Northern Valley Old Tapan Regional High School, he is James Santana. Coach, thanks for joining us here on the wrestling show. Good evening. Well, thank you for coming on because, you know, as I'm sure you may have noticed, this is a little bit of a hot button issue here around New Jersey, the separation of the public and the non-publics. Uh, it's all really anybody's been talking about here in the preseason. So thank you for coming on. And I guess I will start the conversation with you uh, because you wrote the proposal. What brought about the need where you said, you know what, i got to write something about this, and uh, let's get the membership voting. Yeah, well, first, uh, I, I'd just like to say that um, you know, I'd like to thank the coaches that uh, helped write it. Um, and, you know, I, I wouldn't want anyone to think that this is, uh, you know, solely my work. Um, but you, you, did, you did put your name on it, and granted, uh, you had a lot of help. <laughs> I <laughs> did, I'm sure. I did. I, I was representing, uh, you know, I listened to something I believe in, uh, but I did have a lot of help from, you know, a lot of wrestling coaches that are currently coaches. So I'd be remiss if I didn't thank them, um, you know, for, for everything they did and all the research they did. Um, so I, I guess, um, we can go back to the original, you know, proposal or the first time this was brought about, I guess it was 2006, 2007, where we started noticing, uh, or we started digging into some of the data and started, um, having issues, uh, I guess at the regional level with, with seating, um, you know, with, with our wrestlers and speaking with other coaches, uh, it was, wasn't just isolated. It was, um, it was spread out all over the place where we saw, uh, you know, student athletes, other public school student athletes getting seeds over student athletes that were being impacted by non-public, uh, you know, athletes that weren't native to a particular district or region. So, um, you know, we started digging into that and, uh, you know, Joe Longo really spearheaded that effort back in 2008. Um, and you know, the history of it. So this time around, um, you know, a group of coaches uh, came forward and said, you know, this problem hasn't been addressed and it's gotten worse. And when we looked at the data, it really did get worse. Um, you know, if we looked at the number of medals that were, you know, that non-public school athletes were, were getting, um, you know, they're great wrestlers, but, you know, the issue that we saw was they are, not all, but a majority of them are migrating to certain areas. And when that happens, um, you're displacing public school wrestlers. And what we continue to see is an, an inequity in the medal distribution. 
and the medals drive everything in wrestling. They drive seating in the districts. They drive seating uh, you know, in every one of the postseason tournaments, and they also drive power points. So, you know, a lot of people think this is, uh, you know, an issue of competition. But it's really it, – it, that's not the main issue. The main issue is, it, is the medal acquisition that we saw. And that's, you know, the system is based on geography. And um, when you have schools that aren't bound by geography put in with schools that are, problems are inevitable. Um, right now in Region 2, based on the research from the you know the coaches I've been working with, um, there's wrestlers from Region 1, Region 3, Region 4, 5, as far as 6. There's also wrestlers from Connecticut, New York, and they're all concentrated in a particular area here. Um, and when you stack up a Region 2, let's say, kid against a, uh, a Region 5 uh, wrestler, that Region 5 wrestler has had much more opportunity than a Region 2 wrestler. And people think it's just a Region um, 2 issue, but if you really look at the data, um, you'll see that there's pockets of this throughout the state. So, for example, if you look at Region 4, all right, in District 16, which is probably the district that has impacted the most throughout the state. Over a six-year period, um, the non-public schools in that district have accumulated 99 medals, right? And yep. if, you, if you look at District 13 in the same region, there's zero. So all the public school wrestlers in District 13 are able to acquire medals. And you know as well as I do for you that a medal, a student carries that medal for four years. So those students in District 13 now are able to accumulate all these medals while all the wrestlers in District 16, the public school wrestlers, um, have to fight for, you know, maybe one or two medals in their whole uh, high school career. So, hey, listen, I know that there's, there's different sides to this argument, which I respect and that we've listened to. Um, but that is the essence of the issue that we're trying to address here. Um, and with this proposal, what we like about it is we, we brought this, um, you know, th throughout the state. We traveled the state, spoke to a lot of different stakeholders about it. And when we went to the region presidents and then we went to the wrestling committee, they strongly felt that there was another issue, major issue that needs to be addressed in the state, which everyone agreed with, was the number of teams in each region. Um, right now, you look at the northern part of the state, you know, we have 30, you know, low 30s in uh, as far as the teams in each region. When we look at the teams in the central and southern Jersey, they're pushing 43, 44 teams. And, you know, it, it, there's an inequity there as well. So what they right. said was let's try to see if we can um, come up with, you know, tweak this plan a little bit so that we fix that issue as well. And that's what we did. We listened to the region presidents and the wrestling committee and said, let's reduce the number of regions back down to eight in the proposal and um, spread out the, the public schools in seven regions, which forces every region to have 40 teams in it and every district to have 10 teams in it in the public school side. So it equalizes all the districts and regions as far as numbers. So we feel that we, we were able to, uh, you know, solve two major issues here with this proposal. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of people, you know, don't, and I agree, I don't ever want to uh, harm the integrity of the tournament, the state tournament. So that's why we added the wild cards to make sure that the non-public schools are able to qualify a number, which is equal to, um, or closely equal to what they've averaged over the last couple of years. So you, know, you can't look at any piece of data uh, or any single piece of data when you're trying to formulate these uh, ideas. You really should look at longitudinal data um, over, you know, a, a long, longer period of time. So we look at a six-year average of what public schools, um, you know, how many students they qualify for the state tournament. And if you look at the six-year average, it's 56 wrestlers per year. Um, up until the last couple of years, they really haven't qualified more than, uh, you know, I think 60, maybe three years ago. Before that, it was in the 40s. Back when we um, originally proposed this in 2008, they were averaging in the 40s. And, uh, you know, that, that's why we came up with that number initially. Um, so now, the last last year, they I think they got 70, a little over 70 to the state tournament. But the years before that, 
you know, if you look back six years, they were, they were in the forties, fifties and sixties. So 56 was the average over six years. However, we want the best wrestlers in Atlantic city and everybody wants that. Nobody wants to um, diminish the quality of that tournament. So by allowing them to qualify up to 70 wrestlers, um, we feel that we accomplished that. Um, now the devil's in detail, you know that we have to make sure that the criteria to gain those wild cards is objective and, and fair and everyone has, has access to it. So the, the best wrestler gets down there. So, yeah, I mean, um, that's pretty much a summary of everything. Uh, that's a, listen, it, it, there has never been, uh, I don't know how long he just spoke there, but it, it, there's never been such silence on the phone listening to a guest. We are, we are usually tripping over ourselves to get a word in edgewise. Kenny didn't even hit his neck on the, on the dial number. I mean, <laughs> listen, we, we talk about transient wrestlers, yeah. longitudinal data here on the wrestling show. Is this the wrestling show or is this Harvard Law? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't even know if those no, are the right terms. It sounded good. Uh, listen, I love it, and I, I have a, a million things I want to ask, and I am sure that the other three guys on the line with me have a bunch of things, too. I have the least experience. I've only been the host of the uh, wrestling show for six years and have only been covering the sport for about 15, but I, I am the minnow in this, so I'm going to say my piece, and then I'm going to get out of the way for these other guys, and uh, the way you just explained it, you know, I changed my questions five times here because you kept answering as, as you went down the list. But I do want to, I do want for one second to play devil's advocate. Go ahead. Uh, taking from the non-public point of view, where mm-hmm. some of the things that I've heard is, you know, well, years ago, 30 years ago, you know, there were certain teams that dominated, and those teams happened to be public school teams. How come at that point, if these things are cyclical, if indeed – this concentration of power of the top wrestlers being at a certain number of non-public schools. If it's cyclical, it goes back the other way. Will it swing back if the case ever, and I'm just picking a name out of a hat here, if Hackensack is sending, you know, an inordinate uh, amount of wrestlers to the state tournament or anything like that. That's a, um, th- thank you, Kenny. You, you brought sanity back to the show. And, you know, is, is that something speak to that the argument against what the non-public teams might say about you know well they're only doing this because we're non-publics years ago it was different when the power was in the public hand well they're looking at it from a um strictly competitive perspective um and and thinking that you know this proposal is um a bunch of people that are whining about really good teams in a region that's not what it's about um I don't think anyone minds wrestling, uh, you know, the best that, you know, the, that geographic region has to offer. So if it's Paulsboro, who all, you know, maybe, you know, if, if all the kids are living in Paulsboro and they're great, I don't think anyone would ever say anything about it. Look at Pascal Kills um, back in the day. I'm assuming all those students lived in the area um, and they dominated. And, uh, you know, I could be wrong. Maybe they didn't. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't know. Adam, yeah, I'm um, sorry. I've been quiet for a while, James. You, <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. All right. It's, it's just, there's All somebody right, here who has field. been here. I was here on the it's transfer from Providence Catholic Tales. So, James, you, stay on the track you're on because you're going on the wrong train right now. All right. All right. So listen, it's not about having one powerful program in a cyclical process. I understand that. This, this is about a students who, uh, public school students who live in a geographic area, who don't, you know, have a choice to go to another school, let's say. And they have to compete with wrestlers from, you know, the region, region one, region two, the best wrestlers from region one, region two, uh, New York, you know, New York, the border there, Connecticut are all, coming in and it can change every year you know it, right. it, it it can change by year to year sometimes in the middle of the season it could change and right you, you, it's not so it's not about uh you know the power of, of a particular program it's about the medals and i'm trying my best to keep everyone focused on the objective principles of this proposal and if you look at the uh the system all right. There's a flaw in the system. The system bases everything on metal, metal acquisition and geography. And when you have something that disrupts that system of metal acquisition and geography, there's going to, there's problems. 
and it creates an inequity between public schools. So, right. it, you know, that that is the main issue. I don't think anyone would ever complain if Hackensack rose and won, you know, you know, um, you know, uh, every district championship for the next 20 years. And, but if all the kids are living in Hackensack, no one's going to care. They're, they're all in the same geographic region. They're all playing by the same rules. And and I don't think anyone would ever care. You know, there, I mean, there's always going to be people that are going to, I guess, complain about the power of certain programs. But that's not that's not the angle here. It's not the argument. Um, okay. Yeah, no, I think I think you answered it well. Yeah. I uh you know, it's a thing that has been brought up. All right, yeah. next I'm gonna go to Tommy. Tommy, you've been uh you've been the third guy in every time, so you go first. Well one <laughs> thing I wanna talk about is and I think we, we touched on it earlier when we were talking before the show was um the mention of wild cards, James. How how are they gonna I know it's still early, but what is their thought process in determining, you know, uh what would make up a wild card? Because I know that's something people have been talking about and you know, it, it interests everyone, but kind of where? Just give me a brief rundown of where, what they're thinking of, of doing with uh, wild cards. Well, um, what we didn't want to do with this proposal is micromanage every level of it and handcuff people and making logical, sound decisions about things like the wild cards. Um, so, you know, the, the details in that we're going to leave up to the people that uh, establish the seeding criteria in the state for the state tournament. Right now, I can give you an example, and, you know, I, I know it's not a perfect system, but I know that we use individual PowerPoints for, for uh, wrestlers to see the districts. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's, that's, that's the process. Um, yeah. and, and there's criteria, and there's objective criteria laid out before the start of the season. Um, so I would imagine that they would use the same criteria uh, for, you know, for the wild cards, um, they also have to seed all the wrestlers down at the state tournament. Um, there's yeah. a process for that. Why wouldn't they use the same criteria for that in terms of the wild cards? So, it, you know, I know everyone's, you know, worried about that, but, um, you know, we've been involved in wrestling, all of us, pretty much our entire lives, and we've always had criteria for seeding. There's always been seeding meetings, and there's always been, you know, uh, we've always pretty much got it right, gotten it right. You know, is it perfect? No, but. I, I have faith in, in the people that determine the, the criteria. And, uh, I, you know, I'm not that concerned with it. Uh, I do hope, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that it is the most objective process there could be so that everyone has equal access to it. Yeah. Perfect. All right, go go ahead, Ed. Well, seeding criteria is the one loose end that hasn't been tied up. And, of course, the other thing is going to be how do we now re-region? Because... Um, it's, we're now going to have, you know, 35 to 40 schools out, and we're going to now make seven public school regions. So um, that's going to be another issue that has to be tackled. Let's talk about that a little bit, Dan. So t- the question was uh, re-regioning everyone? Yes. Yeah. Um, well, you know, right now there is set criteria that, that a committee uses to set the district and redistrict and, and set the regions. And, um, I believe the first criteria is geography and then, um, I guess, strength of program. So, uh, again, we did not want to handcuff the NJSIAA uh, and dictate to them where the schools should go. Um, mm-hmm. We did look at that criteria and we did mock up certain scenarios in which we feel would work and we'll be happy to make those recommendations to the NGSA when the time comes. Um, you know, just from a geographical perspective, it's a lot easier to um, rearrange the schools in the north. You know, region one, two, three, and four um, are pretty close, you know, geographically speaking. So, uh, you know, it, it's easier to rearrange them and, you know, um, eliminate one region and merge, every, you know, merge that region into the other three. Um, down south and in central, it's a little harder because of how far apart the schools are down there. Um, mm-hmm. So, be interesting to see what there is. You know, there is a committee that works on this, so be interested to see some of that dialogue. Um, and again, right. we have some things mocked up right now that we think would work, but we didn't want to overstep our boundaries. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and handcuff the people at the JSA. Right. Again, yeah. Again, I think you answered. Perfect. You know, it it makes sense when you hear the theories behind it. And then, you know, people get the news in drips and drabs and they look at it from their own perspective, which is understandable. Yeah. But there is a there is there is a method to the madness that you guys are doing here. And it sounds like it's in the best interest of the kids. And the one thing that drives me nuts 
is that sometimes we get away from the idea of what high school sports are supposed to be about. I mean, I understand it's a romantic notion of, but I still see it as an extracurricular activity. And if your kid is, be thankful if your kid is healthy enough to be out on the field, running around uh, and have enjoying time with his friends. It's gotten, again, cost of college, all those type of things have really raised the stakes. You know, it actually college sports raised the stakes. Football, uh, High school football has followed in closely, and it's dragging everything upward with it where it's more of a cutthroat business. And really, I think high school sports should not be a business at all. But that's just me, and that's my romantic view on it. Kenny, go ahead. i, I, I got to be honest with you, James. And I, I feel comfortable saying this since you guys no longer hire me to teach summer school. So if you don't like me after this, it's okay. i got to be I, some of your rationale is actually turning me against the proposal. And I'm a guy who believed in it when I first – I can remember sitting with you during a, a district workout when, when you guys first showed me the plan when it was the, eight, when it was the uh, nine region plan. But my, my question is I can never do this based on competition. I got to be honest with you because competition is cyclical. And even you said that it's only been the last four years where the numbers have jumped up so high as you looked at the data. I I think we got to look at what my first question for you, and and I have several, but my first question for you is when you guys put the proposal together, did you sit down? Cause I think people need to know this because I think you did. Did you sit down with any of the parochials and say, look, we're looking for a solution. Do you guys want to be part of this and help us address what people are talking about? Um, so the process was um, we we wrote a letter to the NJSIA telling them that, you know, we would like to introduce the legislation uh, or the proposal uh, and like, we'd like to meet with the wrestling committee. And we, you know, because the wrestling committee wasn't meeting in time for the advisory committee, we were told that in order to get this on the ballot, we had to submit it to the advisory committee by a certain date. Um, So our initial request was to, you know, first meet with the wrestling committee and go through that process. Um, So we had to do two things at once. We had to wait for a meeting with the the wrestling committee, uh, just to bounce it off of them and see, you know, what they, uh, you know, they, when they actually ended up, Doing this in the end, they actually providing us provided us with some very uh, meaningful uh, additions uh, to it. But um, so we had to go through the advisory committee first. We did, um, and then after we met with the advisory committee, we then sat down with non-public schools, um, a few, and bounced the ideas off of them. And you know, listen, they're they're going to take the position that they don't want to split um, at all, and. Uh, You know, the one thing that I can tell you is every person we met with that we explained what we perceive as a problem all agree that there is a problem. Public, non-public, everyone we talk to agrees that there is a problem. What we can't get everyone to 100% agree on is the solution. And so what we tried our best to do is listen to the non-public school concerns um, and work with them and tweak this proposal to uh, you know, if it went into place, what would be the best thing for you is really the way we framed it with them. And uh, they basically wanted to make sure that they had enough wrestlers to match current trends. So that's why we kept pushing for the wild card to give them the opportunity to do that. So to, uh, you know, to that directly answer your a very key question. question for me, James, and I thank you because my my thing is that – that they wanted, and I think it's important for the public to know that the feedback they gave your committee was, we want to make sure that we have this, that this trend, what you're telling me is that their biggest point was make sure that the trend we see is matched, that we have the opportunity to match the number of wrestlers we've been sending. And that, yeah, and that's, I mean, don't, 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 don't misinterpret oh, yeah. my, don't misinterpret it either. Don't think that, it's all uh, sunshine and, and balloons, you know. They they didn't, you know, they don't they don't they didn't exactly jump up and cheer when we presented it. They're not they're not going to support it because they disagree philosophically. But once you get past that, and we say, all right, let's say it goes through, 
what, what do you think would be the most fair plan? That's when we got the details as to what they felt would be fair. Okay. And that, that, yeah. Okay. The, the other thing is, and, and this is, and, and you're a principal, so you'll get this. Um, I, I did have a problem, and I still think I do have a problem, with voting on something when we didn't know how the wild cards. And you said you didn't want to get into the details, but I, I keep thinking of no child left behind got passed, and nobody ever figured out would it work. And my biggest fear is that this wild card thing is, is going to be impossible to implement. But that, that's Wait a second. Did thing. you just compare no child <laughs> yeah. left behind to the NJSI wrestling proposal? You want, yeah, Kenny, you, you don't want to like, start on the NJSIA. That's for later in the show. What I'm talking about is what I'm talking about is passing but, something without knowing how it's going to work because that takes to the next thing, and and it won't bother me because I've got no skin in the game. But I'm waiting. You, you and I both know that regions were given the opportunity to adjust themselves. And, and we failed to do that. And I'm waiting to see which guys from our geographical area, and, I, and I'll, take, I'll take the shot at the parochials, because I think part of the problem the parochials missed on this was for 10 years they told us uh, we, we can't do certain things because we don't want to travel because the traveling would be too far, and now we see them going to, you know, wrestle all over the country and stuff and play football in Florida four times a year. So I don't want to hear the traveling crap from them. So I'm playing it straight on this one, James. But one of the things is I'm waiting to see which guys from Bergen County end up having to go wrestle at Walk Hill Valley. And all of a sudden we're going to find that their ADs may not have liked this proposal. And I'm not blaming you for that. I'm just saying that everybody can say it's a, you know, it's a great idea for me to say that I want to weigh 150 pounds, but the four guys on the phone with me know that ain't happening. And, you, and you somebody, see that's, that's, yeah, what you bring up is something that uh, stifles a lot of the um, you know, proposals that have come up in the past, whether it be football or other sports. The first question people want to know is, what district am I going to be in? What region am I going to be in? Or football, right. what, what conference am I going to be in? Well, they're asking that because they're looking out for their own self-interest. Correct. And they're not, they're not putting the good of, you know, the, the whole or the good of the, all the students um, in front of their own interests. And what I've seen happen is people, you know, draw up a conference, let's say, in football or something, and the, team votes, the school votes against it because they didn't like the conference they were in. They're not, they're not making a decision based on the merit of the proposal. They're making it based, again, on their own self-interest. So... Um, that, that gets back to this. So, you know, to, to answer your question about not knowing something uh, before you know the details, that factors into when you're designing these things. If you give too much detail, people are going to vote in their own self-interest. And you want people to vote on the merit of it. Now, you have to be careful because you may lose some votes because people say, well, I don't know what the wild cards are going to look like, so I'm not voting for it. Um, and, and we understand that. But, um, you know, there is a process in place in New Jersey, right, for seeding wrestlers. And, you know, we've relied on that. We, this isn't the first time I've heard that question about the wild cards. Um, there's a process in place, and I trust the process. Um, we use it to seed wrestlers now, and I don't see why it would be any different. Um, okay. But, you know, so, you know, I guess the big thing, what you're saying is, you know, you can't give too much detail up front uh, because you, you run the risk of handcuffing everyone. And, uh, yeah also people voting in their own self-interest. Well, well, before I go on my tirade about the NJSIAA, James, you and I both, had, and, I, and I know your AD has probably shown you a, a recent email about what happened with the, with the Big North uh, national schedules that were proposed. So we know what happens when people don't see how things fall out, and then when they finally do see how, <laughs> it, they do go to their own best interests. And that... And, yeah. And that, and and as much as we want to talk about anything here, you and I know each other long enough to know that in the end, that may be good or bad. That may be what sinks this. And the the last thing I have to say to you about this, James, is is that I I was disappointed by some coaches who argued that they were in favor of this proposal, and I've known 
I'll say his name. I know Kenny McIver for over 30 years, and I coached his kids. And I was disappointed when he said it gives my kids more chance to, to compete because my argument for this has, has never been that it's about just competition, that, in fact, no. it's about equity of rules. And, and I think that's the one thing that no one has brought up in a while, that the real basis of this debate has to be, should be, that the parochials play by a different set of rules than us, whether it's the way they hire coaches, whether it's the way they fund things, whether whatever it is, they do play by a different set of rules than us. And, and they're allowed to. What? And they're allowed to. And the NJSIA permits yeah. it. And that has always been, going back eight years, my argument why we need to take a step. And, and the model that we all have, and, 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 and I've tried to play devil's advocate with you. I've given you a little bit of a hard time trying to present some of the parochial point of views. But I, I think the one thing that people have to realize is there is a model out there, and it's the track model. So for all those people who say we should have never split it up, we're ruining the integrity of the tournament, first of all, we're not trying to take everybody out. We still want one state champ per weight class, parochial, non-parochial, doesn't matter. And that, in fact, that this is closer to modeling, and it doesn't total model, what happens in track. And if people would understand that, they then might get this better. You bring up a very important point, and it's something that um, we like to talk about whenever, um, you know, people bring up the discrimination claim, right? Because there have been people that claim that this proposal is discriminatory. And what we like to say to that is, well, if this is discriminatory, then how is it okay to separate um, public and non-publics in qualifying tournaments in track, cross-country, and golf, uh, but it's not okay to do it in wrestling? So there, there is precedent set by that. Now, what some people say, well, track does it by group size, and, then, and I don't, I don't think you can apply a discrimination argument to that. Um, so, but let's take a look at that. What is the flaws in doing it by group size? When you do it by group size, right? We looked at this. We said, do we want to come up with a proposal by group size to model it exactly like track? Um, and the answer is the track model has some pretty significant flaws in it that. It has six automatic qualifiers by group. And when you have six automatic qualifiers by group, you don't get the best product that the state needed champions. Um, I, I, I coached track for a long time. And when, you know, you have kids in, in races that are, you know, five seconds slower than another kid where, you know, whereas the sixth or seventh place finisher in group, uh, you know, four or three, is right up there maybe a tenth of a second behind some of those other kids that are finishing in their top six in the state. So th that that model is flawed because it, it, it has all of these uh, automatic qualifiers by group. And it doesn't get you well, the best I'm going to go back. At, you're not going to the details. All I'm talking about is the philosophy of that the parochials don't come in until the final round, which is where... Yeah, yeah, and, that, and that's what we modeled this after. We modeled yeah, it but Kenny, Kenny said tournament. before he didn't get enough details, and now he's saying that you, that's too much detail. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, Kenny, again, again, it gets back to the point uh, of, you know, it's how you look at it. And I, I think if the proposal is done with a, you know, the mind, as, you know, as James Santana has said here a hundred times, with education being – the most important thing, like not every kid is, is fighting tooth and nail for a, for a college scholarship. So, you know, high school might be as far as he goes and give him the best chance to do the best he can in, uh, in a high school arena that you're, you're not, again, you're not bending it so that he gets a walk to Atlantic city. You're just putting him on a fair start. You're putting him in the starting blocks with everybody else on fair footing. Yeah, the other public gets, schools. Yeah. Right. Well, how he does once he takes his first step, that's up to him. But at least he's starting at the same line, right? I mean, that's that, that's the bottom line. That's uh, it. Anyway. I mean, he has an opportunity to get the medals, um, you know, and, and, and a fair shot. You know? If he goes out and gets decked 10 seconds in his first match, then he's out. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, I, yeah. 
he's not going to Atlantic City just because he competed, which a lot of people say, oh, you know, everybody gets a medal, blah, blah, blah. No, you still nah. got to earn it. You still got to earn it down in Atlantic City. And uh, the, the hockey model is a great model where the, the non-publics and the publics are separated. They play their own way. You know, Burton County, the parochials, they play the, the county tournament and, uh, you know, maybe some creative – marketing there in the semifinals to get two publics together and two parochials on the other side and have them play in a final, you know, whatever that stuff all works. And those are things that you can do, but uh, we could go on and on about this all night, which we probably will as soon as we hang up with you, James Santana, but I don't, I don't know if we can ask you for more than 32 minutes of great conversation and intelligent talk about a topic that really uh, it's not black and white. There are so many variables that go into it. I think you, uh, you know, it's, where Kenny said that he was swinging against it. I came in, I think, kind of against it. And listening to the way it was formulated, I think I'm for it now. But that could change when I talk to somebody else. That's why these things are impossible. <laughs> Get right uh, for everybody involved. But I really do think you took the best swing at it. And uh, we'll see what the Commissioner of Education says. So, listen, this was a great appearance from you. We really appreciate you staying up late with us tonight, filling in some of the people with the facts behind the uh, the rhetoric and uh, thank you, pal. All right. Thanks, Gordon. Well, you want to get to the root of an issue. You, re- you get to the guy who wrote the proposal. Great stuff there with Northern Valley Demarest Principal James Santana. I mean, there were answers. There were questions. There was everything in that interview there. We did the best we could to keep it on a non-biased, either-way uh, platform. And I think I think we did a good job of that. So uh, we thank James Santana for that. And I learned what longitudinal data is. So I got educated here on the wrestling show following Ken Sarajan's very meticulous outline for this show tonight. I am under strict instructions now to move to other topics. One of those other topics tonight concerns the BCCA George Jockish holiday tournament. And that requires us to bring in our first guest of the new season here on the wrestling show joining us on the Moe's Southwest Grill Hotline is the tournament director, Jack McCarty. Jack, thanks for joining us on the wrestling show. Well, thank you. And just to correct you, I'm the co-director, along with Ed Salvi. We share the, du- we share the duties. Oh, you're so, you're so modest. Everybody knows. Your back is hurt. <laughs> from carrying it all oh, oh, it no, is. Just it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jack, we got a, a lot of new things going on with the old tournament right. here. Uh, back in Bergen County, going to be held at Hackensack. Uh, you know, a storied venue for Bergen County Wrestling and everything else back from the Rockland County Community right. College. Uh, just talk about that a little bit. Why the change? And, right. uh, We're are you excited to be it? there. And uh, it's central location, easier for the fans to get to. I think we'll see a bigger gate. And the seating is, uh, is great for the finals, especially because you have both sides of the bleachers out and plenty of room for everybody. Uh, that we had a date conflict at Rockland because of a track meet that has seniority over us, and they wanted us to go on Saturday, Sunday, January 2nd and 3rd, which wasn't really the best thing for the kids and the coaches, especially teams that couldn't get into their rooms on January 1st to practice. So we decided to uh, try, first we tried Paramus, and that, that didn't work. And then we called Hackensack, and Dave Petrella, the athletic director there, was was very excited to have it back there, and very helpful in getting it getting into, getting it there and getting the superintendent and principal to approve it. So we're uh, we're great. It's great working with Dave. We're happy with that. So that's that, that's where we are right now. Kenny, there's what, no plans for the future right now. Everything is up in the air. This is experimental this year, and we'll see where it goes from here. The Bergen County uh, George Jockish Holiday Tournament officially listed it as day to day, Kenny. Hey, hey, Jack. <laughs> yes. So now we're back at Hackensack. We don't have the room that we had at Rockland Community, but we're happy to be back in Bergen County, and I, I'm sure the Southern County schools are very happy too. Right. But how is it going to work this year now in terms of uh, their gym was tight in the old days? I hear you guys have a plan for handling different weights in different parts of Hackensack. Can you run through that? For, because I, people want to know. Right. How's it going on? It's like the old method we used at Paramus. Uh, it'll be tight compared to Rockland, which is very, very roomy. But uh, we'll have four mats in the upper gym and the big gym with one side of the bleachers pulled out for the first day. And we'll have two mats down in the lower gym. 
and uh, we'll run both gyms the whole first day. And then the second day, we'll have four mats in the upper gym. And are you gonna sp- how are you going to determine who's where? But we're looking at putting uh, 106 to 160 in the upper gym, and then 170 to 285 in the lower gym. Okay. That- why don't Why don't you just uh, split it by? No, we don't want to. We don't want to get into that. Kid, forget uh, it. Okay. Different conversation. I uh, apologize. Go ahead, Kenny. Oh, uh, there we go. Um, <laughs> no, it, it, could that be just so people know? Could that be based on numbers of uh, entrants? Could that be shifted? You know, where you throw if there's not a lot of heavyweight or unlimited or 285, whatever the hell they call it now. Could you say, well, you, maybe we'll send another weight class and let everybody know that day that we're going to add 152 down below or something like that? We could. It depends on how the tournament runs. In, in fact, when we were at Paramus, we did move some of the, the lighter matches to the, to the middle gym in Paramus because they finished early. So there's always a chance to – we have to be flexible. Okay. And, we'll, and we'll let the fans know if we're making any changes. But we we just figured – uh, 170 to 285 is five weight classes, and that's about one third of the uh, the weight classes, mm-hmm. and that's one third of the mats. So it's just a proportional thing. What and about it works out individually too? We looked at the numbers of kids who wrestled last year, and it was okay. about one third those weights and two thirds the lighter weights. All right. So last year you did the experiment of wrestling all metal. Once we got to the metal rounds. Mm-hmm. Um, wrestling all uh, final medals, one, two, first, second, third, fourth, five, six, on on three mats at the same time. Right. Are you going to stay with that experiment, or are you going to change anything? Well, we're going to. We can't do it the same way because we're, we'll only have four mats instead of six. We okay. Six, six at Rockland, so we're going to do fifth through uh, fifth and seventh place matches on four mats. Fifth place matches will be in the front two mats. Seventh place matches will be in the back two mats. And we'll just run those continuously. Then we'll break down the two mats and go just to two, to two mats. Pull out the other side of the bleachers so there'll be plenty of room for people who, to watch the finals. And we are going to run first and third simultaneously, weight by weight. So we'll wait till each weight is finished, first and third, and then move on to the next weight. So I it'll, be, it'll be a kind of a hybrid of last year. Okay, I, I, that excites me. But Mike and Tommy, you guys are the coaches. How do you feel about what what Jack's and Mike? Full disclosure, you are part of the committee. But uh, how do you guys feel about this as coaches? I think it's I think it's fine. I mean, when I first started, the counties were at Paramus. I think our first two years, maybe Kenny, and, and it worked out fine. You know, you just got to make sure. Yeah, because you made me go to the other freaking gym. Yeah, it made Kenny run back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, I'd like to see him try that now. <laughs> we'll push him back and forth. But, um, you know, I don't think that's going to be a problem. And I, actually, I like the idea. I liked watching the medal rounds last year all at once. And I actually think, kind of like Jack just said, a little bit of a hybrid of the, the medal rounds with fifth and seventh going on um, on four mats and then the the third and, and uh, first place on two. I think it uh, – yeah, I really like the way last year ran, so I'm assuming it'll be it'll be pretty good again this year. It's, that's the situation we're in. Uh, not everybody's going to like it. There was pl- plenty of criticism about it, but I think all in all, people like to see the action going on all at once. Uh, this will be a little different, but you'll, you'll still be able to see several matches at once. Yes. All right. So uh, those uh, play, the, the venue has changed. A uh, little bit of a variation on last year, and also this one is from Mike At here. I understand that there's a little bit of uh, change with criteria going on with the way kids are going to be seated. Would you like to explain the new That's scenario? New, you, that's for Mike. Okay. Uh, I'm going to jump on it, Jack. And yes. Jack, jump in Mike, when you want. Mike. Um, sure. What we're doing this year, which is a little bit different, is that we're going to have the seating criteria has not changed. There's just an extra little wrinkle there um, to sort of – make things fair in situations when you have an incoming wrestler that does not have any criteria or does not meet criteria that in any way represents their wrestling resume. 
And, you know, last year, I think, you know, it's happened a few times where we've had kids come into the tournament when, you know, people would know, boy, this kid's a five-time state champ and he's going to come in here and, and make, you know, make himself known right away. You know, kind of kids are going to take top three or maybe win the whole thing. And it's always sort of been like, well, there's going to be a death seed. There's going to be somebody who's going to get stuck with this kid. And as we have more and more wrestlers um, that are really tremendous recreation level wrestlers coming into high school with so much, you know, potential to do damage at the state level, we're starting to feel like, you know, last year, Shane Griffith came into the tournament. And I think that was sort of a, uh, a point where we all kind of realized we have to do something. Because at one point, he was going to wrestle Sam Cali in like the quarterfinals. And those, are, you know, that's a state champ and the guy who wanted to pick in third. So clearly we need to do something. But unfortunately, Jack and I talked about the situation and we both realized we have to fix this before it happens. But we didn't have a rule that would actually back us up if somebody said, why did you move Shane Griffiths? So what we did was we came up with the process where coaches can file an appeal. And this is only for the really elite guys, guys that place in national level tournaments, uh, multiple recreation state champions, and Jack will decide if they meet this criteria. And if they do meet this criteria, we have formed a committee of it's probably going to be five or six coaches, and the coaches are going to get together. We're going to read the resume of the wrestler. We're going to look at the seating criteria that we have set up, and we're going to decide where does this wrestler belong based on what we think he's capable of doing in this tournament. And it's going to be a mix of Region 2 guys, Region 4 guys, public and non-public, so we'll have every different group represented, and we'll take the average of what those guys think. If the average is, you know, equal to like a region champion, then he's going to get seated like a region champion. All right. So, again, sounds like flexibility is the uh, is the order of the day. Kenny, was that uh, Schneck hit number one on the old button pad over there? <laughs> All these years I've been blaming Donnie for it. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm going to on his microphone. Leave me alone. Who? <laughs> anyway, uh, so Mike, sounds like flexibility, flexibility is the key word here. Yeah, I mean, and uh, you know what we're also yeah. going for is transparency. We want people to know what we're doing ahead of time. We don't right. want to have a thing where people show up and say, wait a minute, you know, that kid's going to get, you know, that kid has a seed that's equal to a region champion. No, we want to know ahead of time and say, look, this, this wrestler applied for the seed uh, appeal. It was granted and it was determined that this is their seeding criteria because that's the same for everyone else. You know, if you if you enter a tournament, you know the kid, you know, from a school did a certain thing last year. Well, you can look and say, well, he's going to be, that's his criteria. That's where he belongs. So we want that transparency, and we also want to spread it around so a lot of people are involved in the process, not just the tournament directors or assistant directors or things like that. That way, I feel like everyone will feel like we're really doing something that's positive and very clear. And the other thing is it's not, what it's not for is the coach who feels like, oh, my kid was, third in the district last year, but he beat three other district champs. He's better than you think he – it's not for anything like that. It's only right. for these – you know what else it covers? It covers a kid – we haven't had this happen yet – but it covers a kid that transfers into our area that was maybe a state champion somewhere else. Because the truth is, if a, if a Pennsylvania state champ transferred to a Jersey school, on our saving criteria, he's got nothing. You know, it's crazy. But we got to fix – that's something we definitely got to fix before it happens. All right, you brought up transfers, but I'm not going to go into it. Jack McCarty, is there anything else we should know about the 2015 BCCA George Jockish Holiday Well, this, this year we have 37 publics. Last year we had 35, so it was easy to divide those 35 into five groups of seven. So this year it's, it's, it's not totally lopsided, but we have uh, one group of six, which are the fives and the fours, three groups of eight, and one group of seven. So the coaches will see it when I send out the information packet. But we had to we had to kind of align it along with the state groups. And um, we did the best we could, the fairest we could. So we'll, we'll see what the coaches say about that. But there's going to cool. be five public groups. And there's only one parochial group, and that is um, it's only made of four teams. So Because Don Bosco will not be attending this year. Uh, right. They're uh, wrestling at a Rick tournament Memorial. at state, I believe. Is that correct? Oh, okay. Down and brick. All right. Well, it's good stuff here. We're looking forward to really getting the season off and running, and that uh, okay. pretty much happens at the George Jockish. Good uh, good to see it back in Hackensack, too. A little Burton County okay. flavor to the Burton yeah, County. I hope, County yeah, I hope we Jack get a lot McCarty, more fans. The, 
Yeah, well, let's do it. We'll try to we'll we'll try to hold up our okay. end of the bargain and get some people out there. Jack, thanks for joining us as right, always Josh, here on you. the Wrestling Show. Thanks, Bye. Jack. Well, interesting stuff there with Jack McCartney, and we are excited about the BCCA George Jockish Holiday Tournament coming up in two weeks. Marks the official start of really the competitive portion of the wrestling season. I'm excited about that. But I will say I am disappointed in the show in one way in particular. Now, normally, you know, episode one of any of the last six seasons of this show have been full of laughs, full of uh, sound effects, new openings, new everything else. But, uh, Kenny, we went straight for the jugular tonight. Strictly business. Well, if you keep going a little farther, we're going to have some sound effects in a little while, you know. <laughs> All right. So is that is that your cue to uh, end the, the first uh, edition of the wrestling show? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Okay. Yeah, nobody's listening now anyway. We're well over an hour into this. Yeah, nobody's so, uh, listening hey. anyway. <laughs> yeah. The, the great part about episode one is that it leads to episode two. We will do that next week. Thanks for joining us here on the wrestling show. Follow the leader.